All right, so this is the second half of my lecture on GIS data models. Uh, this is the slide that we ended on uh, in the previous lecture, and we'll now move on to talking about uh, talking more in depth about raster data and the raster data model. As I said before, raster is like a, a graph paper. Uh, it's a series of a matrix of cells, um, also could think of them as pixels, uh, organized into rows and columns where each cell contains a value representing information. Um, raster data can store a variety of different types of information. Um, it's particularly valuable to con uh, to, for information that's uh, about continuous variables. Uh, so things like temperature, elevation, um, uh, satellite data, so like reflectance values from the Earth, these types of things um, that are constantly kind of varying um, at every single point on the, on the planet. Um, there's not a discrete or hard edge to them. But raster data can also store things like thematic data um, for, for some discrete features, and, and it can do that quite well as well. Um, so it can also store things like land use or, or soil types. Raster data is commonly used as, as kind of a base map. So a, a raster um, is composed of, you know, a series of, of rows and columns. It's always um, um, and, and so we can think of those as, as pixels. Um, and that you could think of that just the same way as like a TV or, or your screen on your computer or a TV um, on your on your phone or like a camera. Um, how many pixels are there in that in that camera? Um, and in fact, a, a picture is a raster image. It's a raster data set. So when you take a picture, um, it's composed of a series of pixels, um, rows, rows and columns, and each pixel in there has a particular value for like what color it represents. And then the printer will you know will plot that um, particular color um, in that individual cell, that pixel. Um, across all the cells in that image, across all the pixels in that image, to create our um, to create your photo, right? So um, raster data is frequently used as photos, kind of as base maps, just like you see here. Um, it's often um, used to show um, continuous environmental variables as well um, across landscapes or surfaces, such as elevation, rainfall, temperatures. Um, concentrations of, of things like uh, like air pollution um, and other things like that. Um, it's also very commonly used here as uh, or uh, in GIS as, as um, land land use or land cover data sets. Now, importantly, what what really kind of um, is is the uh, an important difference between vector data and raster data. You know, something that's uh, vector data is is discrete. Their coordinates define each one of those um, uh, those points or a vertex, right? And those can be as accurate. They could, you know, that coordinate, that latitude, longitude, could be incredibly accurate down to many, many, many significant digits. Um, the raster doesn't work like that. It, the, the grid cells um, can be can themselves be kind of as big or as small as, as the dimension of that raster. Um, and so you could have a grid cell that's only that's you know rep that's a centimeter by a centimeter. or you could have grid cells that are that are a kilometer by a kilometer or more. And if you want to have more kind of finely, um, you know, features that don't look fuzzy, but look sharp or crystal uh, clear, you know, you need smaller pixels, you need um, rather than these kind of large ones. And those smaller pixels will do a better job kind of capturing uh, curvature and, and fine, fine scale differences in your in your data. The other thing you should be thinking about then, particularly as we get to the you know larger pixel sizes, lar larger raster dimensions, is how do we actually select the value in that grid cell? Um, you know, if it represents elevation, how do you select 
how, how does it say that that's 125 feet above sea level? How do we, you know, particularly if that grid cell, that dimension is, you know, 10 meters by 10 meters or, or a kilometer by a kilometer, how do we get uh, one single value for that grid cell? Well, there are a number of ways to, to do that. If you have continuous data, um, like elevation, for instance, um, you could actually take uh, the mean, median, or, or mode of kind of all of the various um, the locations within that grid cell. And then, you know, to get the mean, you could, you know, average them, right? And then so that um, that grid cell is the average of all the, all, of all the um, elevation within that particular grid cell. Um, when we're talking about categorical data like land use, um, uh, again, you'll have you'll have this likelihood where you have these mixed pixels, um, where a, one particular grid cell could actually be, you know, partially land, uh, partially forest, uh, partial road, and maybe partially a house. So what do we call that pixel? Um, well, there are a number of ways to kind of um, assign what type that pixel is. Um, we t winner take all, um, setting a threshold. Um, those are kind of similar. Um, you could look at what value is closest to the cell center. Um, there are a number of different ways to do that. But, but again, this is a critical part, part of, of kind of obtaining accurate uh, raster data. And we don't have too much time to dive deeply into this. I encourage you to kind of look at these um, some of these differences between the two data sets uh, in, in more detail. It's important to note that we, you can convert between these two data set models. Um, so you can go between a, from a vector to a raster and then back from a raster to a vector. Um, but it will change. Uh, it, it does. It, it, it is important to, to note the, the kind of directionality of this. Um, if you go from a vector to a raster, um, as we just talked about those mixed pixels, you, you have to make those types of decisions. And you can see which kind of grid cells get labeled purple, which ones get labeled yellow or green or whatnot. And that that image kind of somewhat captures the the um, the raster grid set, the raster image kind of captures the idea here of, of the ve in the vector data set. But let's say you have the raster, you've, you've, you've gone from the vector to the raster in the first place, and you try to go back to a vector, you can't recreate these individual boundaries. You can't recreate those uh, vertices. And so it ends up, if you try to go from a raster to a vector, it's going to take the, the edges and the, the um, kind of the, the um, corners of these pixels as the, your vertices, okay? And it's gonna make your, your final feature blocky, even if the original feature was not, okay? So it's important, we can go back and forth between these, but it, they're not gonna necessarily look the same. And as I said, kind of at the very beginning, uh, raster data uh, can represent kind of point lines and polygons, like we've talked about previously, which are typically captured with with vector data, um, but they do have some differences if you try to capture, you know, a, a, a river um, or a line, um, you know, with raster data, it, it can sometimes look kind of funny where you've got these kind of diagonals and there's not a, a strong connection there. It, a very important part of, of raster that's not, um, has no analog, no similar thing in, in, within with vector data sets is this concept of no data. Um, because raster is fundamentally a, this kind of like this graph paper, right? There's, you have to have a value for every one of those grid cells. Um, you can't just cut out a, a little hole in the middle of it or, um, or tear, you know, take away part of an edge or, or a handful of grid cells, right? It, it is, exactly those dimensions. Well, so how you get around that, um, how you kind of have maybe a hole in your data set is by using this no data value, right? So you might have data um, of say elevation um, for all of your 
for, for the entire raster data set, but in some area, for, some, for whatever reason, you maybe don't have elevation data there. You can't just like remove that portion from the, from the raster data set. What you have to do is you have to assign those grid cells to this value of no data. Okay. Um, that's kind of how you get a, a hole in the data set or, you know, like a donut. Okay. And it, so no data, uh, is, is, does not equal a value of zero. It's, it's a special concept. Um, and it's treated, um, um, and, and yeah, so it's treated very kind of special, um, as, um, uh, within the raster data model. Um, as I said before, we're not really going to talk about tin models. These, um, they're, they're not used very much anymore. Um, but important to know that they still kind of exist um, and they float around from time to time. They'll pop up. Okay, so this is my last slide here, uh, kind of a comparison between these three, these three um, primary data models and take some time to kind of look a little bit more carefully at this. Um, but I'm not going to go through it in too much detail in, in, the, uh, in the lecture here uh, right now. So I hope this was informative. Uh, I'm sorry I had to kind of run through this. Normally I give this lecture, I'm, I'm drawing on the board and things like that. So you have to do without that, unfortunately, um, if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, and again, I'd strongly encourage you to, um, to at least skim, if not read more thoroughly, uh, the chapter on data models um, in our Bolstad text. Thanks for listening.